Hey, hey there, Fawn. Thanks for joining us here on the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. This has been a long co time coming. Mm, yes. uh, we've reached out a few times in the past and schedules have been difficult. I think, actually, I think if I recall uh, the last time before this one, before we were able to get you on for today's show or today's episode, the last time we asked, we were interfering with the San Diego. I was going to say no. Padres, but that's baseball because no. I like baseball. But I think it's you're a San Diego football. No. Oregon, fan. Oregon, I bet. Uh, no, uh, I think it's San Diego. It's Oregon no? Ducks. You get got half of the San Diego correct. It, it's Los Angeles Chargers now. It oh. Right. So it used to be San Diego. Chargers. That's where I went at blank, and I was like, oh goodness, we're Canadian. So like we, <laughs> you know, we go for like the Toronto Argonauts from the Canadian uh, Football League. I'm just kidding. I don't watch any football. Uh, Fawn, welcome to the show. How are you feeling today? Uh, where are you coming to us from? And uh, how's things in your world? I am doing well. I am doing well. Busy. Um, I am in um, Southern California, closer to Santa Barbara um, than Los Angeles. So I'm mm -hmm. north north of LA and closer to, Los An uh, to Santa Barbara about half an uh, half an hour without traffic or three yeah. hours with traffic. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Which is a normal day, I would I right? would anticipate. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, Fawn, you know, we've met, a, we've met a few times uh, over the years. And so, so I, we think, we like to think we know a little bit about you, um, but uh, why don't, why don't you let our listeners, who I think also know a little bit about you, but uh, let our listeners know about, I guess, two things. Um, one is, is give us a give us a little bit of a backstory on maybe how you got into education and then how that led you to your current role. Okay. Yes. So once upon a time, <laughs> I grew up in Vietnam. No, we're not going that far back. <laughs> so I went to uh, you know um, freshman year in college, and I met a boy, and unfortunately, yeah, looking back, I I majored in biology because. Okay. That wow. was his major. We both wanted to do pre-med. So, um, and the relationship got serious enough that we are going to get married. And so I thought, oh, well, I want to have children. And I don't see, you know, the, the long years um, in pre-med and, and doing that and having two doctors in the family. So I thought, you go right ahead, because that was his decision, right? Mm -hmm, I was just mm -hmm. begging along. So with my biology degree, I thought, okay, um, what else can I do? So I, my dad is a math teacher. Mm. So that teaching part was always kind of in the back of my mind. So I went to get my teaching credential and um, yeah, to go along with my biology degree. So I started out as a science teacher mm. and I really loved it. I really loved it. Uh, however, it was a lot of hands-on. And I remember buying lots of things out of my, you know, um, my, my own, didn't quite have the funds for it. And we really couldn't use the textbook. It was difficult for the kids. So that combination of not having the textbook and just a lot, trying to do lots of hands-on. And so, and then I've always loved math, right? My dad is a math teacher. So when I, we moved from Oregon and then we moved from Oregon to California, I thought that move was my kind of um, chance to give math a try. So I mm -hmm. took some, um, math courses, uh, or as in, uh, no, I didn't, sorry, I didn't take math courses. I just took the test to, to be able to teach math at, um, you know, at a middle school level up through middle school, or I think it was up through algebra two. So I got that credential to teach, yeah, teach through algebra two. And yeah, I was uh, good to go. So I gave math a try and, uh, that was that never look back. It yeah. really was something, you know, I've always loved it. So now teaching it was just, um, yeah. How did, um, so I, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, I'm, I, John, oh, I was going to say, I think, it, we, I think we're both. Don't you guys know how to thing. raise your hand? Before? I know it's no, hard. Here, hang no, on. We're no, in a no, Zoom no. room. There's no. a, uh, I just did the celebration sign. Darn. Uh, John, what were you going to say? I, I, I was, bet you were kind of going down the maybe, same path. I'm maybe. super curious here. Yeah, maybe. Bon, I'm curious about early math teacher fawn like like i know that you know Jinx. we we yeah is that what you're gonna say kyle like, yeah like i was I'm gonna curious. say like we're, you loved math so did john and i but we came out really flat i would say oh god you know? no cringe 
cringe okay. is what I can think of. Cringe. Yeah, like, give us a picture of what early fawn looked like uh, versus no, now, weight off know? my shoulders, weight off my straight, shoulders. Straight out of the textbook, straight out of the textbook, two pages, you know, ahead of the kids, if even mm -hmm. on, on, you know, maybe just, you know, one page ahead of the kids. So not good at all. Not good at all. And uh, because, again, I just had to, you know, I never took math courses. I, that was just my love for math. And then I happened to pass the test. Apparently, it was not that rigorous uh, for me to, to have not had math, formal math, you know, math, math ed. And just, you no, know, the math was just on the side, you know, for my science degree. It was enough for me to pass those tests. So yeah, so teaching was flat. Uh, let, let me guess, let me guess. So you you were saying you had like a love for math. You always enjoyed it. And, you know, John and I can relate there. And, yes. you know, we have mentioned this on the podcast a number of times before where we sort of came in like assuming everyone would be like us. All the kids <laughs> were going to just be interested in doing the math, you know, and, and that was going to be good. And that was not our experience. So at what point... Were you sort of like, you know, what, what, I guess, what told you at what point in your career, did you kind of go, Hmm, maybe there's a different way. Was there an inspiration out there? Was there a, an epiphany that you had? Was there a, maybe a colleague or a mentor of some sort that sort of went, you know, this is different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what did that look like? It was yesterday. So I was teaching science, but just to fill up my summer, and I love math on this side, I took a, a course at Point State, which is during the summer, and um, it was, it's called Visual Math for L hmm. Middle School Teachers. It's like, hmm. I was a middle hmm. school teacher, I love math, the visual part, not sure about what is this about, so I signed up, and that was the inflection, that was when I thought, oh my hmm. gosh, yeah, I love it even more, you know, and I have to say something. The way that you and John may have loved math is might be very different for why I love math. I love math because I was told that was the class I felt smart in, right? That right, was the class right. I got all A's. I got straight A's. Straight A's. Um, yeah. But here's this class that I took this summer when I didn't know how to solve these problems. I was like, oh, I've never been stuck in math this way. Like stuck for days. Like, what is this? Mm -hmm. But you know, instead of pulling my hair out, I, I, I just kind of pulled back and said, I, I like these problems. I understand what it's asking. Mm -hmm. I just don't quite know how to solve it. And so it's like, wait, I'm a math class. This is a math problem. And it's a great problem. But I don't know quite know how to do it because there's no, you know, prescribed methods. Nobody so, taught me how to do it yet. You right. know, like, like, and, you know, and, and yet I've done before. Right. And so, and I appreciate that. And I said, I want this feeling for all my kids. Mm -hmm. Like what? And so, and then the other visual part of a, a, in a different class, it was, you know, the, the, the tape diagrams and we had to do, we had to avoid using algebra. That was our instruction. Do not use algebra. Mm. You have to use these diagrams and being forced into that. I loved it. And so, yeah, so long story short, it was just, um, I want the same for my kids. It was, it was mm. how I got out of those classes that particular summer. I don't know, it was over two summers or that both classes in the same summer when both came in, the problem solving types of problems, the non-routine problems and um, the visual math part where it's uh, where the visual patterns came and also not just the visual patterns, but solving math using diagrams only, mm -hmm. solving all these word problems. And um, and so here uh, I felt really um, uh, fraudulent or, or, you know, I mean, uh, it was not my fault. I was given A's for stuff I didn't know a whole lot about. Mm. Believe it or not, that area diagram, the, the you know, the area model, yep. I think learn it there as in, oh, multiplication can be model, you know, three mm -hmm. times five be the dimensions of a rectangle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it just blew me away that how how deprived yeah i'm gonna go use the word deprived uh, of of the thinking hmm. how think how early in your journey was that because i i you know i have to say you had mentioned like that you love math maybe in a different way than maybe john and i and i would argue that actually I think John and I both enjoyed mathematics for almost the same exact reason, because we were told we were good at it. And easy. that's easy, why easy. we did it. We, 
I'll be honest, like on a Friday night, I wasn't doing math by any means. I just thought this is what I could do. And, you know, everyone's telling me my marks telling me I'm good at it. To be honest, I actually didn't think I was that good at math itself. I just, I was able to get the grade and that was about it. And, right. but, but I'm curious about when this, when this course happened for you, because I feel like it was well along my journey when mm -hmm. I, when I bumped into and I'll be honest, even you were doing visual patterns, I think, before I had really had my epiphany around how valuable it was for supporting thinking. Mm -hmm. I initially got maybe mesmerized by the idea of like, oh, this could be a good warm up, you know, and I think a lot of teachers sort of fall into that trap. They look for something that we could do at the start of class to get kids talking and, you know, all, all good intentions. But I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have the epiphany that like visualizing mathematics, both patterns and otherwise, as you mentioned, different models is actually a, a massive, massive way that we can bridge the gap between students who may not see themselves as math, you know, mathies or mathematicians and those who, you know, have always traditionally, quote unquote, been able to make the grade. Well, this was uh, when I was teaching science, meaning, uh, mm. yeah, um, early. I'm early, early. I'm jealous early. of you. Mm -hmm. Jealous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's well, awesome. No, I, I, that was just taking the course. The epiphany happened. You know, this is good. But did that translate into teaching? No, that took a, a few more years. Mm. That took a few more years because my assignment, I was teaching geometry at the time, um, high school, and I had uh, pre-calculus also. So it didn't transfer quite well mm -hmm. because you know, visuals are thinking more algebra. And um, yes, definitely more algebra and the proportional reasoning, more middle school. So yeah, it took a few years because my assignment, my subject assignment didn't really quite line up. And I was so new. I was new to teaching. I felt like it was new to teaching, even though I've taught science. But when you, you go and teach math in a different state, I moved from Oregon to California. So a lot of newness. And oh, also, I should say, I was teaching all taught middle school in 11 years in Portland, all middle school. And when I tried out the math in California because of the move, it happened to also be at high school level. So I was dealing a lot of newness that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just trying to barely survive teaching. Right, and, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't, yeah. Now, now uh, I think you've given us a lot of of uh, insight into your in your past and and where some of your ideas had come from and and you're learning along the way we we'd have to ask this question otherwise we'll get you know we'll get emails that say we didn't ask this question because it's the question that we ask every guest which is you know your math moment and and oftentimes when we ask people to think about a math moment you know there's there's like there's something that usually pops in your mind as soon as you say like math class there's like an image from your past that like stands out like for me it was an it was it was an image of like i used to get stickers you know when i was a little kid that like made me like oh i felt really powerful you know i got these like these puffy stickers that stuck out on the on the book like that was for some reason when i say math class i my my brain still goes back to those images you know and 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 to think about the, that that reward system that that teacher had set up uh, for me um, later to find out that you know they, they weren't as useful for me those stickers because I didn't really know what I was doing but hmm. um, but that's still in my mind like it, my brain will still go back there when I hear the words math class and I'm curious like when we say math class like what is popping into your mind that stuck with you all these years as your image of math class. I don't have one the way that you had described. However, I do. The moment came when, um, this, so this particular moment came to mind when my uh, my uh, eighth grade teacher or seventh grade teacher, she handed me the book to algebra. So we were doing seventh grade. And she just handed me just from, yeah, she walked up, went to her bookshelf, handed me a textbook to fun you're on your own right in the middle of class I, I don't know what what triggered it I don't know what I answered but I remember it was the middle class mm, learn on your own she just, just stood up from her desk went in, yeah and presented me with this book to be on my own in front of the whole class and that was it and then after mm. guess what happened after that the next year I was on my own again right because I was on my own I'm ahead, mm, mm. I, was ahead. I was yeah so 
Oh, I see. I see. I was, yeah. I was, it was like, I hey, it's like, hey, you're, why, yeah, but you're, 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 sounds you're, like you're you beyond these. Of, just yeah. keep learning on your own. I'm going to deal with everybody else. You know, you but just what? do your own and thing. It's like, what? I, I just kind of lost a teacher, lost all my classmates. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah. You know what? I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to doubt that that isn't happening. Oh, I think it's happening all often, the time still. Especially, and I, and I think, you know, when we reflect, and th this is a part of the episodes, you know, Fawn, if, if you go back and listen to some of the, some of the episodes and the different moments that have been shared, you know, over 200 episodes right. worth of these math moments that have shared, and some are positive, some are very negative, some are kind of like, you know, maybe not memorable, but this one here, this is the first time I've heard something along these lines. And I always learn something from them. And, and what I'm, I'm recognizing, and I've, I've said this for other scenarios before as well, is that that teacher probably had no intent, like no ill intent. The teacher probably had this thought, like of all the kids in the room, you're best suited to go off on your own. And, and they're, they're thinking like nothing about that at all. And you just, it reminds you that our actions as educators can have a, an impact on the students we serve, regardless of whether they were, you know, intended to be negative or not. Sometimes it's just interpretation. Sometimes it's, you don't recognize how, you know, how a, a child's going to feel, even though that teacher may have thought, well, like, you know, Fawn's doing really well. Like she should be proud that she can go work on her own. That might be what oh, she yeah. had thought. Oh yeah. And she definitely no ill thoughts. And I, I remember it was just, for me, it struck me because it was in the middle of class. It was just, yeah, she, she got out of her desk. We were doing something and then just, yeah, handed me the, the, the text. And I, as a kid, right. And I'm like, oh, I love math. I was just, yeah, that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I do remember it's new. How, how do I do this on yeah. my own? Yeah. I'm doing, I mean, you, you, normally you teach and I, you know, even though I'm yeah. copying you, I'm, I'm following the rules and stuff, but yeah, it was new. Yeah. Um, think about, think about the mindset, you know, like the teacher has about like, it just, it just that action. So if it's happening in our classrooms, you know, today, like what Kyle, Kyle said, it, it most likely is, is that, is that this, the, the teacher thinks is convinced that they're serving the student better by doing that. And like, but, but it's so telling on, on what the teacher actually believes, like the purpose of math class is for, you know, it, it's a clear, okay. it's a clear, like, Hey, the only reason you're taking math is you're just crunching through yeah. algorithms, you know, understand how to do that problem, move on to the next one, understand how to do that problem, memorize it, how to do that one. Because that's, that's all that really can come from when you're like, here's the book, read it, do it. And that's it. You know, like so, that's the so mindset here, that's happening in the teachers. So here's the full disclosure. Not any teacher, this teacher right here. Guess what? That was done to me. So guess what Fawn did? <laughs> Fawn did it. Fawn did it. So I am now teaching mathematics. At, um, um, and uh, I started there. I want to say it was my very first year I was there. And um, there were seven kids, seven, that uh, really high flyers. And uh, I knew, you know, how the textbook opens. It is a lot of review. So these seven kids, what, guess what Miss Wynn did? Handed them the, ge um, the geometry textbook. Uh, no, I algebra. I apologize. Algebra. These were seventh graders. Handed them the algebra textbook. Exactly like what was done to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Except, but they have each other. Right. Oh, they're, you're a group at the back. Go in the back. Make sure you keep right. going. There's seven of them. And I do check in on them daily. So I, you know, a lot of regular class time, there's time to check in with them. How are you guys doing? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, we did that for an entire year. And guess what these kids, then these kids with their parents, a total parent support, they love that, you know, the parents. And then so they took the bus in the morning for zero period at the local high school for their geometry for the whole next year as eighth graders at our school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I talk about that in, in one of my talks about uh, something as, as a, a big mistake, you know, I mean, I didn't, yeah. And it was uh, something that I'm trying to undo. Right. And so mm -hmm. uh, when it came time, it, it took a few years for me to put a stop to that. And I, I was so the guilt was so much, I couldn't sleep. And then I, I put mm -hmm. a stop to it because what happened is um, after that year, I believe that only happened one year. 
And then now I actually teach um, geometry at the school. So because it was successful, all seven and, and, you know, credit to the kids, right? These seven kids, they were, they got top award at the high school level being an eighth grader and, and did algebra pretty much on their own with me right. checking in. Right. Mm. So no, these it, kids did excel. I mean, they, they, they excel. It's not right. you know, something. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, well, in something that we talk about on the podcast often, you know, and John and I love using ourselves as an, examples is that we, we've done many, many things that we would no longer do. And I think it's a really important message for all educators out there is to, you know, we can't beat ourselves up, but something I heard you say is just this idea of undoing. And it's like, by undoing, what it is, is it's learning, right? Like we're learning. You you did the best you knew how to do at the time. We, we talk about that all the time. And I would argue that every single educator is doing that. You know, some some teachers are just still, rushing to the algorithm and getting kids to mimic and they're, but that's what they think is supposed to happen at the time. They are doing the the best that yeah. they know how to do right so. now. And, and I think folks like yourself and, you know, and John and I try to try to contribute to this, this community where we're just trying to spread ideas and, and, and raise awareness and not to, you know, not to create guilt, not to create, you know, um, people feeling bad about the work that they've done, but ultimately, um, the learning. And that's kind of what I'm I'm getting from, from yeah. your thinking here. And, you know, you've done a lot to impact and influence math education. Uh, one that I think is, is maybe one of the, the more notable is, is visualpatterns.org. Uh, great resource, as I, as I mentioned earlier, and we could go way down that rabbit hole, but we also have you joining us for this year's virtual summit. It is our fifth <laughs> annual virtual summit in November. And yes, it is on a football weekend, which you <laughs> had told us, you said, keep it away from Sunday, whatever <laughs> you do. And we said, don't worry, we're going to get you on Friday night. That gives you enough time to like get all your pregame stuff going on Saturday, all kinds of goodies. Appreciate and it. Because football, there's football, they're not a whole lot of games, not like baseball. It, Exactly. It's a great <laughs> fractions question, right? Because like it's like when I miss a hockey game on Saturday night, there is a hockey game that Saturday night. It's hockey night in Canada and the Toronto Maple Leafs are playing and I'm going to be doing the summit. Well, I'm I'm missing 182nd of that season and you're missing like 116th of that season. Like I, I would be curious, like how many more times or how much more time or effort uh, are you missing out on that? We'll go down that rabbit hole. Like that. <laughs> but what I do want to talk to you about is that your session title yeah. actually isn't, I mean, it could have been super easy to be like how to maximize visual patterns or how to, you know, do something like that. But you chose something a little different. And we always ask our presenters, we say like, what's on your mind lately when they say, what do you want us to talk about? And we said, what is on your mind lately? And your title, and I, I'm wondering if you can kind of unpack it a little bit, is called Doing Right by the Eight Mathematical Practices. It'll happen on, on Friday, November 17th in the evening, uh, evening here on the East Coast, and I guess in the early or late afternoon in, on the West Coast. Uh, tell us a little bit more what inspired the title and uh, what are people going to learn when they join you for that awesome, awesome summit session? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited because the other, you know, aside from visual patterns, I'm so big on problem solving and problem solving. Um, the, the, my definition of whoever it's definition, it's however you want to call it. For me, it's, it's about um, thinking deeply and creatively. Right. And um, I know Peter's book, I know he's been on your podcast about the non-routine problems. Mm -hmm. And um, so what happens because teachers are initially teachers will say, well, what standard is that? What content is that? Because I don't have enough time to teach the stuff I'm supposed to teach. How do I bring in something that's not even related to the curriculum? And this is when I say you are doing the eight math practices. And that has to be so, so important, right? That's no matter what. I mean, that's why it spans K through 12. Mm -hmm. So that. It, it's not a one-off thing. It's not this particular level. It's all across all grade levels. And it, it goes beyond classroom, you know, the eight math practices. I want to say that, you know, as a citizen, right, as a thinker, you want you want to grab all those um, good practices. So it, it ties with doing um, problem solving. You know, how do we you know, extract? How do we how do we get the eight math practice uh, from from bell to bell? Yeah. 
right, with your warm up, how you facilitate the classroom, and um, you know the the uh, vertical whiteboards if that's what you're doing, the five math practices. So it just incorporates, you know, how do those, how do we leverage all these routines and be mindful um, that the eight math practices. And my 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 also my other thing is, I, I know right now a lot. Unfortunately, a lot of it lives. On, on posters in the classroom. Yeah, you have true, true. Facilities. Whereas I just want, you know, go ahead and start administrators, teach all parties involved, students, students right, teachers, and, and communicate when we communicate with parents to start using the language from the math practices. And uh, so that yeah. right, it becomes, uh, when we say conjecture, what do we mean when we say perseverance? What does that look like? Yeah, and for sure. Habits of mind. So it really is, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the yeah. big translation for me is that the habits of mind and totally. how do you cultivate that, right? And nurture that. I'm excited. I'm excited for you to dig into mm -hmm. that because like, it reminds me of uh, an article um, I read uh, by Alan Schoenfield by, yeah. you know, he said, uh, that I think the title was uh, why teaching math is so difficult. And, you know, he used a quote that that said you know that what we're teaching in school is the fossilized remains of like what mathematics was you know to to people who you know use mathematics and, and created what mathematics we we have we're not doing that with our students and and i think when i read that article too got he dives he dives pretty deep into you know why it's so important that the the, the mathematical practices are are there because like that gets to the heart of like what mathematics really is but uh like, you know, like we, mathematics, and, and, you know, I think, I think and he goes into a little the history of like wh where, you know, how the common core came out and, and like what actually impact that had on, on classrooms. And, and I think, I think what really struck me about, about that, and, and it goes to why the mathematical practices need to be so important because no, like you're right. They're just on posters. People don't treat them, you know, the way they need to be treated as actual standards we need to embed with our students because they, they focus solely on the content and the content standards of going like this, I got to check this list off. And he had mentioned in his article is that when, when we started to list standards so granularly, that's where teachers were like, well, I got to get this. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. I don't have time for that over there because all of these things are laid out so clearly, so specifically that we have to actually get to. And these things over here are more general. So it's like, because we went so specific with our standards, it actually pushed the the actual really important pieces of mathematics to the to the outside edge and I, and i and i'm so glad you're you're doing this session at the summit because i think it's so important that we focus on that as as really the primary you know aspect of why we're doing math and hopefully you know i i'm 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 from the classroom so I have really right. practical strategies where teachers don't have to buy anything don't have to Perfect. you know not elaborate setup. It just this is you know the questions you could ask, the simple routines that you can embed, and uh, yeah, the types of questions we can ask to always uh, highlight, always mm. get kids think thinking. And, and I love it. Oh. I love it. And you know, having those strategies is so key. And you know, I I like to think of those practices here in Ontario. You know, we call them math process expectations. Right. Same right. idea. They're worded differently, but it is the same thing, the same stuff, the important pieces. And it's almost like we've kind of, we've accidentally, you know, hyper-focused on the content standards. And in reality, now I try to help educators to sort of rethink the content standards a little bit to go, they're there as like ideas. It's like a menu of ideas of what you might do in order to emerge these practices like in order to do mm. this stuff and do this stuff well like imagine if you didn't have any content standards you're like well where do i like what do should I do? I do tomorrow i you know i i don't know like it, the freedom might be freeing for some but for others they might be like i don't know what's important to you you know so it's like i've got this beautiful menu of all these ideas all these beautiful things that happen in math behaviors and now what I want to do is craft these experiences that allow students to engage in these practices as routinely as possible, not like you said, as posters on the wall of like, you know, the, the way math would have been or could have been or, or should be. It's like, you know, like, hey, remember, this is what math really is. It's not what we're going to do here today, kids. But just, <laughs> so you know, that's what it really is. 
And I think that's going to be great. So I'm wondering if I'm listening, I'm a math moment maker. I'm excited to dive into this session. Uh, all three of us are all jazzed up about it. Uh, what are you hoping um, that a, a teacher is going to, you know, sort of take away if they, you know, were to walk away and they go, you know, I was in bond session and I, I, I really, I really learned about blank. What are you hoping they walk away with um, when you engage in some of that work on November 17th? Actually, the first thing I hope teachers will recognize is, oh, I'm already doing right. some of this, right? So to amplify that, because I, I, it's so important that teachers, I want teachers to celebrate what it is they're doing already, right? And then um, hopefully, oh, and then they see. So first, that, just that recognition that, oh, I, I do that. I just, I guess I just need to do more of it, make it more embedded rather mm -hmm. than, you know, oh, I did that, you know, two weeks ago and I they were not thinking about revisiting so recognition of what they're already doing is great and then maybe add and and how to carve out some time how do you make it so it's intentional and uh, hopefully um hopefully it's it's practical simple and uh awesome. yeah and 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 tying it with uh with other resources that um hopefully they say oh i, I i'm familiar i've heard about it and so, and yeah, nothing I'm sharing will be like, oh, I've never heard of that. So it's just hopefully um, a pause, a pause for them to think, oh, okay, I'm doing that. And I will do more of this because that looks doable. Mm. And or and yeah, and whatever I try, because I, I speak normally at the bigger, con not normally bigger conferences, but you know, I mean, uh, not particular district or a particular school. So I try to uh, give out out tasks, things that we do are adaptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From, I mean, even, you know, elementary through all the way, all the way through, or, you know, at least there's a, a wide range that, and uh, it's just uh, flexible that teachers can say, Oh, I just need to change this part, that part. Right, and it will right. work with students. Yeah. Yeah. What would be one of those practical examples that you think um, is going to be most impactful for a teacher when they show up to the session? Well, well, just um, so you don't have to do a full visual pattern, for example, I would love for teachers to do that, a full visual pattern, as in, you know, the regular one that you see on the website, what is the next step, and eventually generalize to any step. But also, there's this routine I called notice this sequence. So um, the teachers would get, um, you know, show the students just like six terms, and uh, five, five, six terms. And uh, yeah, that, so the numbers are already in them and they ask for the hundredth term. And so there's, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, it's what is in the first term and what's in the hundredth term and the common difference. And so it's just, and then you can just imagine they can just change um, one thing about that sequence and it's a new question. I love right? it. It, it I can love be, it. yeah, it can be anywhere. You can make, you know, the common difference if there is such a thing or, vamp that up and uh you know instead of asking for 100 ask for the 45th ask for anything and so many things that you can change and it's it's super quick i love it i love it and you know using those routines as a means for teachers to kind of zoom out and think about other parts of their you know their curriculum other parts of their course where really what it comes down to is, you know, having that purposeful questioning, that intentionality, that, you know, getting students thinking instead of, you know, sort of sitting back and waiting for us to sort of tell them the next move. And uh, I, I think that's fantastic. Uh, friends, uh, I know those who are listening, many know about visualpatterns.org. We will post that up on the website. Uh, Fawn, what if somebody's listening and they're like, shoot, I'm watching curling on Friday, November 17th. And Early. I can't make Fawn's session, but I do want to reach out to Fawn. I want to learn more about the work that she's doing. Uh, where can the Math Moment Makers find out more information about you? I am on Twitter. Uh, not as much as I'd like to speak and to connect. But yeah, I'm on Twitter. And um, please give out my email. I love to... Um, you know, interact with teachers. And um, so my email, uh, fawnpwin at gmail.com. And I will answer. Uh, I try to answer all the emails. 
And uh, yeah, just to reach out. And I have a, for visual patterns, particularly, I do have a workshop uh, done with a grassroots workshop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Visual patterns, yeah, because the reason I have the website is also because I want to say at least 90% of teachers who use it, use it um, in a way that I was not my intention, which is to break it down into a table of values. I mm. see. Mm. I love right, that. Right, 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 right. And that's like the number one thing. It's like, oh, oh, but if you do that, right, it, it takes away the visual. Totally, I love it. it. It's like you, you've you stripped away the whole right. point, point, the whole point, right? And, you know, it's we've talked beauty, about it that. To itself, right? Yes. And you have, you know, 10 different ways to see this rather than really, you if you strip it down to just, you know, to count up the objects and it's just one way and then you they look for the common difference, whatever. Yeah. 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 So, and once you yeah. teach that, it's hard to unteach it. So, totally. 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 That's I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's I love hard. that. It's... That's, that's definitely something we've, we've talked about quite a bit is this idea. Like you have this beautiful support in the visual, you have this opportunity, a gateway into seeing it grow into seeing where these, you know, these pieces are coming from where, where it's, where it's coming from or where it's shrinking from. And we're saying like, you know what, don't even worry about that. Like, let's just, Let's just fire it over here. And it's sort of like, well, you know, almost in a way, what was the point? Not that table, you know, a table of values is never helpful, no, but just uh, it, ultimately. You know, so yeah, I, one way, exactly. one way, I literally one say way. it is teachers hold off on it. Yes. Right? On it because, yeah, because then, oh, now we're looking for slope. It serves totally. a different purpose. We want that table of values. So, yeah. So the, the and then variations of running that, for example, I love the one where, because my kids get so good at it, honestly, just because, right, imagine being a routine so embedded that I start thinking of other ways to facilitate it. And I love the one where I simply show one step and they need to create the before and after. So mm -hmm. imagine all that yeah, room that's great. to play with um, a, a pattern. Yeah, I love for it. sure. For sure. It gives so much, so much opportunity for students to kind of step into it and then you can slowly unfold mm -hmm. after that. So fun. Um, before we say our goodbyes here, if you had to leave our listeners with one big idea or one key takeaway, what would that be? So back to the magic wand, I was thinking about just if there's one thing, I want people to, I want kids to love math, right? To love math. So, and so I want math to be right up there with recess. Kids says, you know, right. hey, I was school, oh, nothing. Yeah, but they can talk about what happened at recess. And I think I just want kids to enjoy mathematics and to enjoy it. That means they get to explore and play. So if we as teachers have the same mindset that mm. uh, actually use the word play, because that's what I, I say. I say to my kids, oh, here's the problem. Let's play with this problem. Instead of let's you know work on this problem, I actually say play because it's about investigation. The word investigation doesn't come into mathematics the way that, you know, science, you, you say, say investigate in science a lot. Why can't we say the same word in mathematics? Because to me, that's what it is. It's play, it's investigation. Um, it's beautiful, you know, all, all that good stuff that, um, mm. so I want teachers to walk away with uh, a lightness to mathematics that, um, to enjoy but for them to pass that on i keep thinking about the teachers it's hard to it's hard to to sell something a product without us loving it ourselves mm. so if we can get teachers to love mathematics the way that you know well, that it can be loved right that will be contagious to the students yes I, I 100% we've talked about, you know, I said, you know, math class oftentimes is, is like selling vacuum cleaners, right. To, to someone that doesn't own carpet and, you know, you're, you're there. And if you don't like the vacuum either, right, that's like hard you, to sell, right? yeah. you, you've got a hard one. And, you know, there's a, a, an entrepreneur out there, Alex Hormozzi, who, who does a lot of, you know, discussion and, and um, speaking in, in, in terms of the business world. And he says, like, if you don't believe in your product, yeah. And you're never going to sell. And mm -hmm. ultimately, yeah. like, that's what that's what we're doing as educators, like whether you're a math teacher full time all day long, or whether you're teaching six subjects, and you're in elementary, it's like, you got to go in there, and you got to sell it. Guess what, if there's a subject area that maybe isn't your favorite subject, it's your job, 
for you right. to love it, you yeah. know? And, yeah. and so 100%, that's such a great key takeaway. I love it. Uh, math, make it more, make students like it and enjoy it just like they like, look forward and enjoy recess. Yeah. Vaughn, right. it's been awesome having you here. We can't wait to have you back. Uh, I'm looking at the time here where, uh, where we are recording this and uh, we are just under one month away as we record this uh, this podcast episode. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing that session on November 17th. Uh, friends, sign up, free live event, summit.makemathmoments.com. And uh, Fawn, have yourself an amazing remainder of your day and we'll see you soon. Same with you guys. Thank you so much. What an honor. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Carl. The honor's Take ours. Care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.